Uh, before going for the radiograph, let us familiarize ourselves with the general anatomy of the vertebrae. So, to uh, discuss it, I have a thoracic vertebrae as a specimen. So, uh, I remember the parts of the vertebrae uh, like uh, this. It consists of the body and derivatives. So body we can see in 3D it's cylindrical in uh, cross cylindrical in shape and especially the thorax vertebrae is a uh, heart shape in contrast with the reniform shape that is a kidney sh like shaped of body of lumbar vertebrae and we can also uh, see the derivatives of it which attaches directly with the body and or indirectly with the body. So here I have pedicle, pedicle uh, it gets a feeling of uh, some sort of attachment giving rise to some something else. So its pedicle attaches to the transfer process of the vertebrae which you can see clearly here. These are the transfer processes. If I uh, hold it in anatomical position. Uh, okay, this is anterior, this is anterior part, and this is the posterior part, the spinous process, which we can uh, feel uh, when we palpate, palpate our back, which is the sharp or pointed region in our back, and this is the anterior part. So transfer process lies here. You can look. This is the transfer process, and transfer process is joined by joined to the spinous process with the lamina. These are the lamina, and now the pedicle. On the pedicle, we can see two structures. Uh, they are the superior articular structures, superior articular processes, which joins with the above vertebra as the jacopofacial joint. These are present above also, and below also, above and the below. We can appreciate it the inferior articular facets also on the inferior articular surface and here superior articular facets which articulate articulates with the above vertebrae so let us have an 3d imagination if this is a spinal cord so let us put in the spinal canal this is the central canal yeah so i put it like this these spinous vertebrae are inclined downwards in case of thoracic vertebrae and now i bring another vertebrae oh, so you can see from the joint formation of zygopophyseal joint here Just like here here this one vertebral column a section of vertebral column can here demonstrate and this white part is the spinal uh, for, uh, the intervertebral foramina fr from where the spinal nerve comes out now here we can visualize easily the appreciate the zygopophysis joint and here in between the body of the vertebrae the most important part the empty space between the vertebrae which we can see uh, it is filled by the intervertebral disc which is a fibrocartilage ring which cushions the vertebral column and uh, crucial Role, it plays crucial role in the osteophyte formation which carries its own importance. Now just to review it again, we have a body of vertebrae, the pedicle and the transfer process, the superior article process, the inferior article process which takes part in joint formation above and below with the separate vertebrae and these are the transfer process with spinous process. So this is the basic general anatomy of the vertebrae which will help us to understand the osteophyte positioning uh, which are quite common in the anterior margin and we are fortunate enough to see this in this vertebrae uh, which is which we can appreciate the osteophyte here if you can see here the anterior margin which is the most common site for the osteophytes to form and uh, Exceptionally, it is the case in the uh, thoracic vertebra we are seeing um, as they most the osteophytes are most commonly seen in the lumbar vertebrae 
uh, but we are fortunate enough to see in the thoracic vertebrae also uh, which points out the uh, older age of the subject because uh, in older age the osteophyte forms in the thoracic vertebrae also but initially they form in the lumbar vertebrae in the anterior margin which are quite uh, evident in the radiographs which you will see shortly so this was the brief introduction and now the biomechanics the biomechanics of the vertebral column which will help us to understand the formation of the osteophytes so it, it will take less time now when we see as i demonstrated the vertebral column like this and uh, assuming the little finger as spinal cord and this the vertebral section of the vertebral column now there is an obese cases if we consider this as lumbar vertebrae these are the they are convex anteriorly the lumbar vertebrae are convex anteriorly and when due to weight the anterior margins the of the body and the anterior part of the body are pushed like this so here pressure variations takes place so a body accommodates this excess pressure in the form of osteophytes so osteophytes are protective in nature they are not any pathological uh, formations in our body but they are accommodating structures formed in our body to cope with this the pressure variations so this is quite important i have re uh, reviewed again we are uh, assuming this as the section of the lumbar region and this is the spinal cord my little finger and this is the empty space the Uh, space left for the intervertebral disc as the and due to obesity or any pressure changes if or any due to jerk uh, consisting uh, continuous jerk the anterior margins are more coming prominently like this we can see or their excess pressure continuously so the there would be excess regling friction in this area which will give rise to the chondrocyte uh, migration hyperplasia and there are many complex activities so going on which are quite good concept which we should keep in mind before going for the radiographs